Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Today's video, I'm gonna make the number 55 Slim Wallet. You can download the plans on my website. They come with two different versions. One's with the curved top, and then another one that has a straight cut top. So I've actually made this wallet for myself. So the color combination is my personal favorite. The Heritage Green Leather from Lonsdale Leather and the Chestnut Butero. And it matches the sunglass case that I made. There's a video on this. There should be a link somewhere up here that has the chestnut lining as well. So in the number 33 walkthrough that I just did, I focused on a bunch of edge polishing techniques and cutting techniques. In this video, I'm gonna be focusing on edge polishing and stitching. I've got the chapters linked in the description below, so if you wanna skip ahead to a specific technique, I have it listed there, so you don't have to watch the full 20, 30 minutes. Not sure how long this one is gonna end up at. Okay, everyone, so we're getting into this. The only piece in chestnut will be the front pocket. So we'll get this one cut out first and then move into the to all the green leather. Or when you're using your templates as a cutting guide, it's better to have a thicker cardstock than what I'm using here. It's a little light for this because I could easily cut into the cardstock because it's not that heavy. You don't want to wear on maybe a uh, 110 pound, I think it's called. I think this is 67 pound cardstock. So because this wallet is for me, I'm going to select this little bit here that's got some wrinkles on it. Save all the nice clean stuff for paying customers. So with all your pieces cut out, we're gonna take the three pockets, the front, the back, and the middle, and edge polish the tops. Just starting with the medium grip sandpaper. It doesn't take much. And then on our curved piece, just short strokes back and forth while I'm rotating the actual piece. So I can feel if that curve has any bumps in it. I actually feel a little bit right in there. Go to my coarser grit, do some longer sanding passes. This will help smooth out that curve. So now there's no, no bumps along that surface. Go back to my medium grip. Now my front pocket, same thing. So just rotating the piece evenly. So I hit corner to corner and then switch the orientation, hold your sanding block down firm and rotate your piece along that sandpaper. Get you a nice faired curve. So once your pieces are all sanded, you may need to take an edge beveler and take off the edge that's raised from sanding. I find on this Butero leather, I'll have to do this. So I'll do it on the front and the back.
This is a number one edge beveler. Um, on this heritage leather that I use, I don't find it creates as much of a bevel or a burr on the edge. But for the sake of consistency, I'll go ahead and take that off anyways. Using this, I'm just holding it at a 45 degree angle to the piece and just working my way around. So something you don't really see, but you'll certainly feel, and especially notice once we get into the edge polishing. Okay, so just using some token all, it's gonna apply some to the edge, working it in evenly, kind of going heavy handed with it at first, just using my hands until that's gone. Make sure you get off any excess on the surface. Started with the wood slicker. Depending on how dry the leather is, will depend on how much token you'll need to use or how, or how much edge polish, whatever your brand is. Then I use a little bit more, just dabbing it in, letting that leather soak it in. The second round is when you start feeling that polish. So now this edge is really, really smooth already. Wipe off any excess. It now feels dry to the touch. Take my camas cloth and rub it in. I'm not using a lot of pressure. So that's in. So now my third time, use just a little bit less. Come back with the wood slicker. This really helps consolidate those fibers. And then one last time with the cloth. So we can see this edge polish. So now with our tops of our pockets all polished up, I'm gonna move on to skiving the inside of the middle pocket. So if you're following along with the templates, this orange section, that's where you're gonna to wanna to skive. So I think it's about six mil. So you can just set your dividers to give you that mark. Then on the inside of your pocket, just give yourself that guideline to where you're gonna be skiving. I have a whole video on hand skiving a pocket if you wanna watch it. So you can see that goes right out to zero. So there's nothing at the bottom here. And I'll finish off the sides here. And all of this is to reduce the bulk once this all gets glued together. Because you have multiple layers of leather building up on each other. If we, aren't, if we don't do this, then it gets very kind of chunky. If you have to use a lot of pressure, you feel like you're fighting it, then you need to sharpen up the blades. Because this shouldn't take much effort. So I'm just coming through and thinning down this edge. So now it comes right out to zero. So when I put my pocket on top of that and everything's pressed down, there'll be no, you won't see the pocket underneath here. I'm gonna move on to the front part. 
and get the front pocket glued on. Just line up the bottom corners and make a little mark just underneath where the pocket ends. Take our roughing tool or some sandpaper. You want to rough up six millimeters of the edge. The six mil is going to account for the three mils of cut allowance and then three mils for the stitch line. So let's take some glue. Nice thin layer. So same thing here. I'm just applying that glue about six mil, 10 mil in from the edge or so. So you want to let these two pieces dry. So we'll take our two pieces. Line up the corner. Because we work to our templates, we know these two pieces are exactly the same size. So our corner lines up perfectly. And then press it down. So now we'll let this piece sit and then we'll get our stitch line to secure this piece, these two pieces together. So using the template, we'll take this top piece, take your divider, set it to that trim allowance and trim off the top portion of the front pocket. Okay, so we got our dividers, set them to three mil. Get the largest iron that you have. This one's nine point or nine teeth. Align that last, the last tooth with the very top of the pocket. Make sure that those teeth are just coming through. I like going back three holes and that keeps the line straight. Just coming through. So now we'll go through and stitch this. I've got a stitch length of about two inches. Um, and then I like to do times six for the length of my thread. Depends what thickness of leather you're using, what weight thread, and just what you're comfortable with. But I like having a few extra inches of thread when I'm done. Double loop before I pull that back. Stitch holes go up and away. So I will start in the third hole. Even up the thread. Back stitch one. Make sure it's still even. So back stitch one and two. So coming through, cast in on the back side, setting the stitch on top of the other one, doing the same on the back side. Open up that hole, come through, cast, and guiding that thread on top of that first stitch. Same with the back. Okay, so then we can just stitch forward as usual. So left needle through first, right needle goes behind that thread, cast the stitch over. I like setting my front stitch first and then pull down to secure it with the back stitch. So I use my right needle just to open up that hole. Starting with the left, right needle goes behind, pull that thread back, come through, cast,
and rinse and repeat. So left needle, right needle comes underneath. Pull this thread back through and then your right needle goes in the top part of that hole. Then as you come through, rotate the thread around and then sink that stitch and you see it naturally is going to get pulled up. Back stitch, pull down. And the angle that I'm pulling matches the angle of the holes. This right hand, all I'm doing now is opening up that hole. Traditionally would be done with an awl. Since I'm using pricking irons that make holes that go all the way through, I don't need the, the power of an awl to actually open up that hole because it's already got a hole all the way through. So again, left hand first, put that needle through. Right hand comes underneath pull through, take that thread, pull it out of the way, and then with the needle that's facing towards you, the workpiece, basically put it into that hole, and that's in between the back thread and the forward thread. Come through, cast or rotate that, this loop behind. Pull up, pull up. You're not using a lot of pressure to set that stitch right here. It's just, a, it's just the pressure is only with my fingers. All I'm doing is just pulling with my ring fingers. So again, starting with my right needle, just to open up that hole I'm going to come through with my left, find the bottom of that hole, and now it's as normal, come through, right needle goes underneath, come through again between that, this thread and the one that's just come through, oops, Pull through this thread that's right here, pull it down, and that's going to guide that thread to lie right underneath. Same thing on the back side, it's naturally going to fall on the bottom side. Pull tight. This is exactly why I like that extra thread. This is an extra eight inches of thread. If I had done the basic rule of times six, I would barely be able to stitch this right now. So that's why I said earlier that really the minimum thread length I like to use is about 20 inches. Because I'm not usually stitching less, much less than two inches. So those are coming through. So now I'm going to cut nice and close. And then there's the stitch before hammering. Again, that's before hammering. So now we have to press in this little extra thread back into that hole. So what I do is just get a bit of glue and press that thread back in. And I do this before hammering down the stitch. Same thing on the back side. And then you can either roll it, hammer it down, which is what I do. Or if you have the fancy um, crimping pliers or flattening pliers, the little flat jaws, you can use those. So there it is, flattened. And the back side. 
nice angled stitch. So while I'm here, when I'm finishing that, I'm just gonna run my one air crease right along the top here. And then I'm going to polish off this edge. So now that we have our front pocket done and stitched, we can go ahead and glue it onto the back piece. Using the template here, you just want to make a mark right where that starts. So we have two stitches and then our pocket starts. So we're going to make a mark there so we know where to align it. And then just like we did before, we're going to take the roughing tool and rough up just one line for our glue. So that's all nicely roughed up, ready for glue. I'm going to put these two pieces together. Align it with the edge of your temp, line your actual piece with the edge of that template. Then you can align it with the top mark you've made and align it with the edge of the paper. That way that'll get you the proper amount that you're looking for. Before you press down right to the corner, come over and align it on the other side. So if you take your template, just like we did before, we're gonna mark, in this case, we're gonna mark the bottom, the middle pocket. That way it's gonna allow us to align that bottom with that mark, and then mark our stitch line for the bottom pocket. Now we'll go ahead and let that dry. Get some glue on our side here. The two side tabs. And glue right on the bottom. So once we have this all glued down, what we wanna do is run a little mark and that becomes our stitch line. It's gonna align the teeth right with that line. <clears throat> Now we can put a stitch through there. And line up this edge of our top of our front pocket. Press that corner down. Come over to this side. Get that up right into that corner so it's nice and There's no gap. And then you can come through and just press these, this front pocket down. Okay, everyone, we're back at it for day two. We're gonna trim up all of our excess here and get these pieces glued together. So the benefit of a, having a nice sharp, sharp blade is that the cut you get is really nice and smooth and requires very little sanding and preparation before edge polishing. So it serves to get, to have nice sharp blades, it makes your work a lot easier. So those two are trimmed up and if we've done everything correctly, all the corners align, we're good to go. So now we're gonna get the stamps on here. I'm using this stamp here. You can see this little piece of leather on here. I like putting this underneath the piece that I'm going to be stamping because it allows me to move this whole setup around so that I can get it centered right underneath the press. So before we glue this together, one thing I like to do when I'm doing rounded corners, what I'm gonna do is actually cut this corner first, 
sand it down so that when I glue this together, I have that corner already and I know it's already to shape. It's also going to allow me to run my stitch line and pre-punch this side. So if I pre-punch the front side, it's gonna be a lot easier to then just finish punching through that back side. I just use a woodworking chisel to chop the corners. So I just line up the two points with either side. That gets my radius. So I'm just gonna come over to my sandy board and sand that radius nice and smooth. So I'll start with the coarse grit just to knock off those two corners. So I can still feel a bit of a bump right here. Right here feels nice and smooth. Now that radius is nice and smooth. So I'll do the same thing on this side. So I've got all of my edges sanded nice. Come in with my finer grit and then we'll come in, get that stitch line in there. Okay, so our corners are cut. Now we're gonna run in our stitch line. So you use your dividers, set to three mil. Coming around the corner, nice and slowly to connect those two straight lines. Do one, two, three passes to get that line. I'm going to align the chisel so that it rests right above that pocket edge. and punch through just till the chisel teeth are coming through. So I'm going back three holes. And I'm gonna stop there and come Come back in from this side. Again, aligning that first chisel mark with the very top of the pocket. So I'm gonna come in now with my two prong chisel. And now, right along this corner, I'm just gonna make a tiny little mark right there, which you won't be able to see. And then another little mark in this corner. The mark that I placed right here, I'm gonna place the iron in that mark and rotate over. And then eyeball to make sure I'm aligned correctly. So now I'm aligned at 45. And you can see I'm, what I'm doing is placing that chisel right against the top and placing it down. So that's that, that hit is right above that pocket so that it's a nice, when you stitch this, holds the top of that pocket down nice and firm. Thinking about trim allowance. The reason I don't use trim allowance here where I have to glue this up and then cut the wallet as a whole is because it gets pretty thick. Um, and I also have multiple layers to deal with. So in this case, 
I have a pretty large ridge right here, which is two layers of leather. So if I have all of this glued up, I now have a total of five layers that I'm gonna to have to cut through. Well, those layers don't all lay flat. So when I go to make that cut, the leather can move on me, it can become out of square, um, it, can be, it can be slightly off, and then if I'm going to make that trim allowance, I can't pre-punch one side unless I set my dividers to way inside. If I have three mils of trim allowance, three mils of my stitch line, I have to set that into six mils. But then if I'm slightly off on my trim allowance, well now my stitch line isn't three mils from the edge. And because I'm using, because I'm running a, a, a crease along the edge, that's a mil and a half from the edge, I want my stitch line three mils so it all aligns correctly. So just in the end when it comes down to it, I find it easier to have only trim allowance on the front pockets and leaving my main panels that final exact size, knowing that when I glue these two together, they are the exact size. So putting these together, I'm just gonna start at the top corner. Make sure everything's aligned nice and flush, just that first little bit. Come over to this side. Make sure that's aligned with the top and the side. I'm using my finger in here to make sure none of this touches. So you can see accurate cutting. Makes all the difference. So now I'm gonna slowly just press down this side making sure I'm staying nice and aligned. Put my finger in the middle again to keep the bottom part separated. Come to the other side. Press those pieces together. Again, making sure it's all aligned. Press down your corners and then close up the middle. So you can see that I've, since I've pre-punched those corners, once this glue is set, I'll come in, nip off that a little bit, sand this down, and then this is basically gonna be ready to go. And then also with it pre-punched, I can now come through and just punch through the last back few layers. A little thing to note about how I adjust my cl the clamp itself. This is actually on an angle. So instead of having this straight up, I turn it away from me, almost faking that angle. I find it helps I get a nice angle on that stitch. So maybe if you're using one of these stitching ponies, uh, just angle it, see how that works versus working on it straight up and down. So now I'm going to back stitch the exact same way. I'm going to use my right needle, open up that hole a little bit. Starting with my left needle, it's going to go in the very bottom of that hole to come through. Right needle again goes underneath. Same technique, pull that thread back. And again, there's this thread and this thread. The right needle is going right in between. should come out on the back side underneath that thread. So come through, that's going to sink underneath that thread. This is going to sink underneath it. Pull everything tight. I'm going to do one more. Right needle opens up that hole. So starting with the left, come through, right needle forms a T underneath. Pull that thread out of the way, come through. The back thread will 
nestle underneath that set stitch and same with this. You can use your needle to help guide it just to make sure. There we go. So start by creasing the I start by creasing the straight sides first on both corners. So I'll do there, then I'll do here, and then I'll come through, slowly work my way around that corner. I'm not using a lot of pressure at first. So I want to get that crease really well defined. Each pass I'm doing just slightly more pressure. Let's get a nice crease right along that corner. So you can see that crease really helps define that stitch line. Okay, so we'll start by applying some uh, a thicker coat onto this raw edge. I like using a thicker coat to start so that the leather can really absorb in all that moisture. So I'll start with my wood slicker. And I'm not using pressure, I'm just using the, the heat from the friction that's builds up by rubbing this on here. That's what's gonna polish it. So that's step one. Step two, a little bit less tokenol. But again, same process until it rubs in. And then this time I'm gonna use my canvas cloth. And I find it's the second step that re you really start noticing the polish. So you should be able to see that. I think you can see it in the reflection there. It's starting to get pretty shiny. So my last step, another thin layer of tokenol, wood slicker. And then finish it off with a canvas cloth. So edges are all polished up. It's a fairly quick process. It doesn't take that much time. The results kind of speak for themselves. It gets a nice polish. If you wanted, you could follow up with some wax, heat some wax on there, colored or clear. That will add a nice protection to it and give it that bit of extra shine too. Thanks for watching everybody. If you've downloaded the plans, thank you very much. If you have any questions or comments on this one, please leave them in the comments below or you can message me, message me on my website. So there's quite a few of you that watched my last walkthrough video. Interesting fact, 90% of you are not subscribed. So if you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing. It helps a lot to tell YouTube that you like what I'm doing here, head over to my website, check out my fundraiser for Project Rescue Children. If you're interested in these plans, if you give a donation to that, um, I'll give you these for free. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.